May God be with you. Welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth for us gathered in the sanctuary for those online. I don't know about you, but what a way to start worship um, with some Mendelssohn coming our way. And Blake, for your amazing gifts, um, you will hear these choral variations not only in the prelude, but also uh, peppered throughout the service. So we will get almost the entirety of this collection and what a gift it is as we settle in. Uh, we're glad to be together. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent as we make our way to the cross. And this year we hear these really juicy stories from the Gospel of John of Jesus' encounters with people. And of course it's the particularities of the people, but mostly it is Jesus. What is Jesus telling us in this season as uh, we experience death ourselves in this world and in our lives? And what difference does that make? And so Pastor Christian will be preaching today about this man born blind. And I invite you to settle in for a longer gospel today. Um, and what is it that is shimmering? What do you hear today uh, that comes into your heart? So as we begin, I invite you to stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who walks alongside these 40 days and sustains us with a gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. We'll take a moment now in quiet for our own reflection. We confess together, holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your ways life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave us Jesus so that we all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and renews you in the Spirit's power. Amen. We continue together in song.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. us pray. Holy One, you look beneath the surface to see your image in each of us. Banish in us what prevents us from recognizing truth so that we may see the world through your eyes and with the compassion of Jesus who renews and redeems. The Gospel this morning is the ninth chapter of John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. 
Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it was someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, And how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it was that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, you do not, not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as of for this man, we do not know where he comes from. And the man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And they answered him, Were you born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see me may say, then those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have not sinned. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. Word of God, Word of Life. Good morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, uh, for all the ways that you speak to us with a living word, uh, let this time to be bread for our journeys and draw us closer to you. Amen. There's a saying that goes, get out of the bleachers and onto the field. As I read and reread the story of healing and discipleship, I couldn't help but picture the disciples and the Pharisees in the bleachers 
watching the whole thing unfold like a sporting event, heckling and hurling insults and judgment while Jesus and the man born unable to see were on the field doing all of the hard lifting. Look carefully in this story and you will find layers upon layers of judgment that get in the way of the people of God being in relationship with God. The disciples get the party started with an offhanded remark as they walk by a man who was born unable to see. Surely to be in that condition, he must have done something morally offensive. Or was it his parents who committed the crime, they asked Jesus. The religious authorities get bogged down in questions about whether or not Jesus was a sinner, whether he was working on the wrong day at the wrong time, whether the healing and the man's own story of how Jesus was working in his life was genuine and real. My kids call these judgy McJudgerson moments. I'm not sure if that's an actual term or not. And we might believe that we are beyond these kinds of hurtful assumptions and judgments as we go about being in relationship with one another, but we are not at all immune. I admit it's hard to teleport back to the first century and put myself in the place of someone who has no knowledge of science or medicine, someone who would honestly and naturally attribute something like blindness to a moral sin. But as I was writing this sermon, no lie, I found myself fuming in judgment over the behavior of the misguided disciples, the legalistic Pharisees, and then maybe even the Christians down the road who might have different views than I do. I could keep going, but I think it's safer to stop here. I've made my point. So no, I am not immune from judgment. We are not immune Judgment and blame seep in and permeate our lives and our relationships and our communities and our relationship with God. I have a good friend who's a pastor in Wisconsin, and she's been out of the office on medical leave due to her chronic battle with depression, or her demons, as she likes to call them. In her lifetime, she has been peppered with all kinds of bizarre questions and judgments because of her ups and downs and her many acute hospitalizations. She tells the story of one person asking her, if you are really a Christian, why don't you pray and just ask God to fix you? To which she replied, yep, I'm a pastor, I've thought of that. Well, I guess you must not have a very strong faith then, the not-so-helpful person responded. Otherwise, you'd be fixed. I guarantee you, oh, how she hopes to be fixed. But I believe what she prays for the most these days is to be brought back into her own version of abundant life, whatever that turns out to be. We might use different words and ask different questions in 2023, but we are not so different, are we, than the disciples who asked from the bleachers, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Some of this is just human nature, of course, when things we don't understand are happening When danger looms, when someone is unfamiliar to us, we want to explain our differences away. I'm sure there's at least one psychologist in the pew this morning who could help us see that at the root of all of this, at some level, is a built-in human desire to stay safe and to protect ourselves and our families and loved ones. 
But sometimes I think about it this way. Our judgments about others help us draw a line in the sand to keep our distance from all the complicated and hard things in life that we can't control or understand. If the man who is unable to see is on the other side of that line because of what he has done or what his parents have done, we know his affliction will never be something that impacts us. If the woman who has been hospitalized because of her mental health is there because she doesn't take care of herself or because she hasn't made good choices or because she doesn't pray faithfully enough, we can protect ourselves and those we love from suffering like she has. And yet, in the words of my dear friend, notice that when it comes to passing judgments of the disciples of the, or the Pharisees as the miracle of healing the man unfolds, Jesus never takes the bait. The problem is that whenever we draw a line in the sand to separate ourselves from someone else, Jesus is always on the other side of that line. Jesus is always on the other side of the lines that we draw, making mud out of his spittle and sand or whatever ground is beneath his feet, drawing near to the one in need, blessing with the dust of the earth, creating out of nothing, opening eyes with whatever he has to work with. As poet Jan Richardson writes, anointing with a tender and grimy grace. Perhaps in this fourth week in the season of Lent, with the cross just almost in sight, we are all being called tenderly, of course, to get out of the bleachers and to get onto the field to get a little grimy, to engage just a little more directly in this steady stream of work that, with God that comes our way. Thanks be to God for always drawing near, for always seeking and bringing forth abundant life and relationship, and for a love that knows no insiders, no outsiders, no bounds. Amen.
And now may the peace of God be with you all. And also with you. We will now share the peace if you're online. Uh, we will join you in the comments to greet you and for us here at church to turn around um, and see the community among us both online and here in person. seated. We continue now um, with the offering, the basket up front um, for all the ways uh, that you contribute to the mission and vision of Mount Olivet. Um, and worship is one of those ways, those tangible ways where the living God comes and meets us and forms us in community. And we're so grateful uh, to hear an ongoing variation, number three now from Blake. We pray over our offerings, God of good gifts. Receive these and all our offerings as we present them in full service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the source of life. Amen. Indeed, right our duty and our joy. 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you today as Lutherans. We believe in this meal is the real presence of Jesus. So in ordinary things like bread and wine and in this story, the dirt of the earth and, and human saliva is the presence of God. And so uh, wherever you are today, this is a place to let down the shield of fear and judgment and simply receive. There is nothing we need to do and open our hearts and our hands and trust in this living God that comes to save and heal. And um, may we be renewed in that gift and um, our eyes and our hearts open as we live and love in the world. For those online, wherever you are receiving communion today, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Uh, for those here in the sanctuary, just a reminder that the wafer is gluten-free, wine is red, and juice is lighter in color. Please come forward now. This feast of love is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Uh, so now we pray as a community, um, so much community in this story and for all the ways that uh, we are kept from each other. Um, this is a time where we connect with each other and um, with one voice um, claim a trust and a faith that God is up to something. And for all the things that we just need to um, let go of and open ourselves up just like the eyes of this man to be able to see things. Um, we all have blind spots, and so may this time of prayer be um, a time for us uh, to be refreshed in what God is doing in the world. So if you are online, I just invite you to type your comments, and I will read those in just a moment. I'll start us off, and then for those in church, just raise your hand, speak your prayer, and we will pray together. Good uh, God today uh, for long stories that were written because we need to hear it all. Uh, for us just to miss your healing power that comes person by person in our interactions and our encounters with you. And for this man um, who received the gift of healing and was called in a new way. And God, we pray for all those ways that even the church shuts that down uh, for us to follow rules uh, rather than trust in each breath in this living life that's given to others. So um, we confess uh, all those things that we hold back from our blind spots in our lives and ask for your grace to be able to see. So with that as a community, hear now the prayers that we pray. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Kathy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so first, Ferdinand McCall, um, uh, moving from the house that he shared with Judy now to a community living at Silver Creek in Maple Grove, and I know many Mount Olivet members um, have a connection there. So, uh, Ned, for this new community among you, um, for that interaction and community of care, um, and for a big move, those are big moves. Uh, God, we pray in the midst of all of those things uh, for your love. And Kathy and Mark, for you too, as you accompany your dad in that transition. God, in your mercy. And for your friends that we have been praying for uh, through cancer treatment um, and um, tumors. Uh, God, for the path forward, we continue to pray for healing, for reconciliation, for love to lead the way. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Bob. Mm. Uh, God, for John, for a kidney transplant, for that miracle, um, and for ongoing healing, uh, for this gift of new life to be able to see and hear again for John, we pray, God, in your mercy. And. Indeed. Um, Anne is praying uh, for a friend uh, who is beginning the chemo journey. So the start of that and the unknown and all of what that, how will um, bodies react to that and what will be this next thing? Uh, God, what is life and what is death? It's so unknown. And yet uh, you promise to be there, especially in the times of suffering and the uncertainty. So we pray that uh, dearly and for your friend and join your prayers. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Diane. Oh. 
All right. Colleen Kennedy, um, in her chemo uh, treatment, is finished for breast cancer and now moves on to radiation. Um, Colleen, for your endurance um, in these long winter days and in the days of treatment, and as we lean into Easter and spring, uh, for you to be able to see that finish line, um, and for each and every day for friends like Diane who come and nurture and nourish you, uh, we continue to pray for your healing, connecting with you today, Colleen, God in your mercy. Jeffrey Dahlberg and his family. Yeah, Jerry Dahlberg uh, died unexpectedly over this last week. Um, a longtime member, um, Jerry, sometimes was at 9 o'clock, often at 10.45. And so for his family, um, in the midst of the shock of Jerry's death, um, but also for this promise, um, and for us to remember every day in worship, this promise comes to us uh, for that day that grace is enough and for Jerry's grace and love now in heaven, accompany this family as they sort things out, um, planning his funeral um, and to proclaim Resurrection, we pray, God, in your mercy. Um, and a thanks to all of you. My mom passed away um, on Thursday of last week. We know death and we know life. And um, I am a pastor and I'm also very much a daughter. And... Just deep gratitude for your prayers along the way. Um, these really intensive three weeks, um, but I rest in this promise um, that we sometimes doubt, but that is true. And so um, my tears are not necessarily because I'm sad, but because something was really moving. And um, <clears throat> grateful to be real with you about that. And I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. Um, and just appreciate your love and support so much. So um, into your hand, God, for all that we have prayed, we trust in that mercy and that grace. Um, <clears throat> I do have some announcements for you. Uh, first of all, Pastor Kristen is leading um, a time of Bible study and dwelling. This is such a rich story, and she's actually going to enact this in terms of a play. And so um, I invite you to join us um, as we just dig a little bit deeper in what God is doing um, in the midst of these stories and come. And will you be in the fireside or the conference room? Conference room. And then um, you know that our mission statement is finding our place in God's unfolding story. Uh, we were a part of a grant through Luther Seminary for the past couple years that did some experimenting around portrait portrait photography and also creative writing to get to know each other and as part of that grant we are doing some work here at Mount Olivet and we're calling it stories within the fold so here's the invitation you are invited to come and be trained by a portrait photographer it happens to be uh, Jess Holloway Rich's wife and you will learn the art of photography and then the second piece is to learn the art of creative writing um, by a, a poet. And once you are trained, we are going to give you stories here at Mount Olivet and ask you to take pictures to document those stories or write about that. And then next fall, we will have a gallery here at Mount Olivet sharing the stories of us. So these can be stories from the past. They can be stories um, of the future of what God is doing here in this community. So if you feel a little nudge or curiosity uh, to learn about the art of photography or of creative writing, um, come see us. There's a sign up online. Uh, Rich is around. I'm around. Love to talk to you more about that. And we're really excited um, about this spirit of creativity among us. Uh, to be able to tell the story here at Mount Olivet. So thank you for that. And then lastly, next Sunday is the um, last day to sign up for Easter flowers. Those flowers can be given in memory or in honor of someone that you love, and uh, they will adorn the chancel area on Easter morning. There's little sign up um, out in the welcome counter, and you can also fill those out online. Um, so with that, I invite you to stand as we close and sing together. Oh, 
receive this blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, call us again and again. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God. God.